Good morning, and welcome to Shalom Mennonite Church. We're glad that everybody joined us this morning as the temperatures are rising, and obviously lots of tension is also rising in our communities and around the world. This morning we get together for worship, and we thank you for joining us. This morning we begin by talking about the Great Commission. The scripture this morning will be about the Great Commission from Matthew. But this morning, I want to start the worship service by beginning with a passage from Psalm 8. So this is Psalm 8, verses 3 through 9. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? Yet you have made them a little lower than God and crown them with glory and honor. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea. Whatever passes along the paths of the seas, O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Please pray with me. God of grace and God of glory, we thank you so much this morning that we have time to be together in worship. While not traditionally, we thank you for the opportunities that we have to be worshiping where we are in our homes and understanding that church is not necessarily about a building, but, a, but about a group of believers being together. God, in this time that we are dealing with, in all of the unrest between health social injustice. We just pray that you be with us this morning as we get together for worship and remind us of the grace that you have given us over our lives. God, we just ask that you be with us as we go through the service this morning and pray that you be with us as we begin and as we end. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to be able to share some good news with you today. We're going to take a bit of time to celebrate good things that are happening. I'm so glad to be a part of the Shalom community. I enjoy learning about ways to follow Jesus' example of love and to be able to share joys and life's experiences with all of you. Recently, I've also been special, especially thankful for the opportunity to hear about what's happening in the community of Shalom by the Shalom Facebook posts. I appreciated hearing about your Sunday school teachers and seeing some pictures. I'm going to try to share the screen now, and hopefully you'll be able to see some pictures of yourselves. When I asked some of you to share your good news with us, I received these wonderful responses. Luca and Anika's good news was they got a special milkshake treat from grandma and they got to go hiking. 
Johan has so loved getting to make regular trips to Slate Creek and the Dick Arboretum where he spends hours on end searching for signs of life. Exciting finds have been turtles, geese, Mississippi kites, snakes, bullfrogs, tadpoles, blue herons, and Beth Burns. He has also really enjoyed the privilege of being allowed to leave his bed in the middle of the night to get a snack or a drink on his own. Nico and Ian were excited about the successful Crew Dragon launch last weekend and celebrated by building their own Lego spacecrafts. Good news in the Graber household also included getting permission to hug Grandma. These good things are certainly worth sharing about and celebrating. In doing some research beyond Shalom, I learned about a website called Good News Network, and I learned about some really cool stuff other children have been involved in all around the world. Maison Rupon Tompkins is a 12-year-old boy from South San Francisco who recently invented a simple germ-resistant hook device that can open doors press buttons, and move or pick up objects. That way a person's hands don't need to touch handles and buttons, keeping the germs off their hands. It's called a Safe Touch Pro, and he's making them on his 3D printers and selling them. Chelsea Fair is a 10-year-old girl who initially asked that she not get birthday presents, but instead have people give her art supplies so that she can create art kits to give to homeless shelters, persons in foster care, women's shelters, as well as other places. This has grown so much that she has given more than 1,500 art kits to places such as these. A mom in England had an idea to cut a hole in the fence between their yard and their neighbors and put a clear plexiglass window in its place so that the children on each side of the fence could see each other and still play together. In British Columbia, a six-year-old boy, Callahan McLaughlin, decided to spread joy in his community by setting up a drive-by joke stand. There's a lot of stress in the world, he said, and I kind of want to get some smiles on people's faces. Stephen Wamukota, a nine-year-old Kenyan boy, received an award from Kenya's president the other day for his invention that allows people to wash their hands by using their feet to step on a lever, which will pour soap into a person's hand, and then step on another lever, which will pour water from a bucket. This keeps their hands from getting germs on them. These stories of good news happening can bring us joy. It's good to share what you're happy about when you're happy. I hope we can hear more about good things happening in your lives. What are some good things around you? What are ways you can make good happen in our world? Matteo, capitulo 28, versículos 16 a 20. Así pues, los once discípulos se fueron a Galilea al cerro que Jesús les había indicado. Y cuando vieron a Jesús, lo adoraron, aunque algunos dudaban. Jesús se acercó a ellos les dijo, Dios me ha dado toda autoridad en el cielo y en la tierra. Vayan pues a las gentes de todas las naciones y hagan más mis discípulos. Bautícenlas en el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo y enséñenles a obedecer todo lo que les he mandado a ustedes. Por mi parte, yo estaré con ustedes todos los días hasta el fin del mundo. Our scripture this morning is from the book of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, and it's the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. Amen. You've probably never heard me speak Spanish before. Uh, for me, it's very fitting that I read Spanish scripture uh, this week for these particular verses, this particular passage. And a brief story uh, will tell you why. When I was at Goshen College, uh, I did my semester abroad study service term in Peru. For the first six weeks, I lived in Lima with a host family and went to classes every day with my classmates from Goshen. I was not especially confident in my Spanish skills. I had learned some in high school, but had never uh, used the language in a real life situation. And although I could understand the Spanish that was spoken to me pretty well, I was very slow to speak couldn't seem to find the right words in time. I was embarrassed about my accent. I, I just didn't want to get it wrong. So I wasn't very talkative with my host family. But one day after supper, uh, a few weeks into my time there, I was sitting at the table with my host parents and, and they asked me about Mennonites. I stumbled through some words uh, about bautismo and la paz, baptism and peace, and uh, la guerra, we don't participate in war. But uh, I wasn't sure how well I was doing, uh, although it was a subject that I was comfortable talking about in English. I remember they were also interested in the Amish. Who were they? How were they different? Uh, from the Mennonites, were they Christians too? Yes, they're Christians. They are similar to Mennonites in some ways, different in other ways. Uh, my responses, I'm sure, were, were simplistic and jumbled. But on hearing me speak, they had a question, uh, especially when I was talking about uh, communities living separately from the rest of the world. What about La Gran Comisión, the Great Commission? My host parents were Christians. They knew Jesus charged to his followers, go, make disciples of all nations. Did Mennonites care about that? Honestly, I don't remember what I said in the moment, but it sure raised some questions for me. Because what I knew was that my version of the Mennonites didn't lean on this particular scripture passage. I knew, for example, that uh, white people and white nations had done horrendous violence to people of color around the world and justified it by saying that they were, quote unquote, making disciples. This was my association with the Great Commission, honestly. But 
the exchange with my host parents raised two questions. First, if the meaning of the Great Commission was contained simply by white people exploiting black, black, brown, and indigenous people, why was it that my Peruvian host parents were concerned that my Christian tradition might not be taking it seriously enough? Did they really think that Mennonites and Amish should be more into conquest and conquering? It seems like something else must have been going on, at least from their perspective. So second, if something else is going on, what is it? What was Jesus charging his disciples to do? What does it actually mean to make disciples of all nations? In that conversation, through my stumbling Spanish and by my host parents' gracious patience and curiosity, I was invited to bring this scripture passage close to my heart and the heart of my Christian faith. And most of the time when I hear or think about this passage, I think about my host parents. Because when I lived with these words longer, I kept coming back to the word gospel, good news. That word itself does not appear in these few verses, but the whole book which culminates with these words is the whole story of Jesus' life, which is good news. And we are called into the world to help people follow Jesus. So what is so good about Jesus? And why are these commands what we're supposed to help people live into? These were the questions that I had to continue asking after this exchange. Let me offer the beginnings of a response to the question, especially in light of the violence rooted in our nation's white supremacy that has been so much in the news and in our Facebook feeds the past couple of weeks. Jesus' basic announcement of the good news, of the gospel, was that the kingdom of God has come near. A new world is dawning. He announced a time of healing broken relationships and overturning fallen systems of power and oppression. The way he lived and the way he called his disciples to live was a lifestyle that revealed God's kingdom to the world. It had the power to transform the world into one of peace and justice, but it was immensely costly. It required internal transformation. The movement requires people who have been convinced within themselves that they are willing to take on the hard work of transforming themselves and transforming the world. A very practical example right now is for people, especially white people, who want to work against racism in our society. Speaking for myself, throwing myself into the work of anti-racism will require deep personal change. Seeking out all of my resistance to the work, much of it hidden, and repenting of it. It will also require throwing myself into concrete, observable social change. Both of these things are necessary. The good news is that there are guides who have walked this path before me and can teach from their experience if I will only listen. And racism is just one example of the overarching, far-reaching power that the Bible calls sin. Jesus' anti-sin movement requires internal and external transformation. It may seem like a job that is too much for us. But the good news is that there is a guide, Jesus of Nazareth, who inspired other guides in our traditions who we can follow. Jesus showed us in one human lifetime what this work against sin looks like. We can follow his lead. This is good news. Jesus' life is 
the gospel. This summer, Pastor Rachel and I will be preaching on stories about Jesus from the Gospel of Matthew. As you follow along, I invite you to ask, how does this transform the world? What would it look like to model our lives after the anti-sin activism of Jesus of Nazareth? What about this story transforms who I am? What about this story has the potential to change the world if it is lived out? This is what Jesus calls his disciples to on that mountain in Galilee. The work is long. Let us travel Jesus' path together. Join me in a time of prayer for ourselves, our world, and our community. I will close by saying the Lord's Prayer. I invite you to join with me. O oh God, we live in hope that your reign of peace, justice, and righteousness will be a reality on earth as it is in heaven. We live in faith that our actions here will make a difference. We live in love for our neighbor, inviting them to catch a vision of what a world ruled by love could look like. But all is not as you wish it to be. We tear ourselves apart. We lose sight of the goal. We do not want to change ourselves. 
we forget that as new life emerges, we will experience the pain of birth. We deny that all are invited into the new world. We refuse to follow Jesus, even when we say that we will. Heal us, Lord, in your steadfast love. Forgive us in your everlasting mercy. Guide us in your grace. Remain with us in your faithfulness. Today we pray for those out on American streets crying out for justice, showing faith that a new world is possible, daring to believe that their voice will be heard. Give us the courage to enter your work with the gifts you have given, the graces that we have received, each in our own way. We pray together with your followers throughout time and space. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I send you on from this time of worship with this Franciscan blessing. May God bless you with discomfort at easy answers, half-truths, and superficial relationships so that you may live deep within your heart. May God bless you with anger at injustice, oppression, and exploitation of people so that you may work for justice, freedom, and peace. May God bless you with tears to shed for those who suffer pain, rejection, starvation, and war so that you may reach out your hand to comfort them and to turn their pain into joy. And may God bless you with enough foolishness to believe that you can make a difference in the world so that you can do what others claim cannot be done. Go in peace.